they had a family. So uh, you got a family going on. Well, the worship of uh, is a vital key. You know, it's a, it's a major key to uh, victory. You'll find that people who thank God have more to thank God for. The people who um, are disgruntled uh, have victim's mentality are always wise and poly um, didn't give anywhere. There was a man in Russia who basically um, had told his kids that, that God created the heavens and the earth. It wasn't evolution. And he spent, I think it was 20 years in the gulag. They were trying to get him to deny that and confess it because his kids had told the uh, authorities. And, the, and some of the wardens were hard on him. <laughs> they were trying to crack him. You know, in the gulag, uh, sometimes you have to make thousands of parts, and if you don't make a certain amount of parts, if you show up 20 minutes late, they sometimes will put you for six months in a small hole. And on the side of the wall is like cement that's in and out, where you can't knock on the wall, you can't write on the wall. And uh, it really tried a lot of people physically. Many died, many, um, in China the same way, you know. Um, if you guys ever want to read a book, read The Heavenly Man. It's about a guy who went through extreme abuse in China. I read it to my kids, and my wife thought it was a little brutal because they were really young. But, um, I was really looking at the victories, not necessarily the torture scenes, but they go into detail about what he went through. At one point, he jumped out a window that was like really high. He should have been physically hurt, and he wasn't. The Lord told him to do it, and he got away. But I was thinking about that scripture. I'll, I'll run through a troop and jump over a wall. You know? mm -hmm. Wow. Come on. Um, all kinds of stuff. But um, today I want to I uh, just minister out of Peter a little bit. Um, it's with, with the things of God, this book <clears throat> is a revelation book. Even though, even though the Word of God is true on, on historical facts and it's a science book, it's really it's, it's a revelation book. It wasn't made for things of the natural, it's things of the spiritual. And you can't, you can't get the truth of this book from a natural mind. That's why uh, it's important that people get into the spiritual mindset on things. And your and I's ideas will continue, our, our ideas will continue to get challenged. God's word never changes, but your understanding of life, your understanding of truth, sometimes can get wrecked. And that's okay. God doesn't mind offending your mind. You know? <laughs> he says, blessed is, is those who are not offended in my words, for offend, not offended in me. And I just, I get a kick out of it. I mean, I just, I, I love the way Jesus does things. You know, he's, you would think that if you were going to go and change the world, that you would have gone to the, the, the best colleges of the time, or the smartest minds of the time, and, and talked to them. Yeah, brains have their, their place. But, like I say in business, brains are cheap. You want to be a creative thinker. Also, you want to think around the corner if you're going to be good at business. You got to know what's happening ahead of time. You got to be knowing what they're going to do next year in order to make money. You got to be able to see and understand the future. You can hire smart people left and right. That's easy. Leadership is another thing. But the thing is, is that Jesus does not go to the military leaders. He does not go to the colleges. He prays for 12 hours, one hour for maybe for each of the 12 disciples. And then he gets tax collectors. He gets fishermen. He gets doctors. He kind of gets a, a hodgepodge of these people, right? And then he's preaching to them, and he's, you know, he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. All these people are coming because of miracles and stuff, and then all of a sudden, many of them leave. And then he doubles down on it all the more. And then he asks the people, you know, like Peter and them, are you going to go too? And he 
He says, no, you have the words of eternal life. But he wasn't, he wasn't relying or depending upon the people sustaining him. He was sustained from heaven. Amen. And he was bringing the change. He, was, he, he had the connection. Well, in order for you to walk this thing out, in order for you to walk this, this gospel out, you got to have what's called the Christ connection. Yeah. And th that's, that's a relationship with Jesus and a, uh, a connection with him through the good and the bad. A lot of Christians will come to Jesus to uh, get a better marriage, uh, to get more money, to do something in the natural. Mm -hmm. And you're missing it. Yep. You may come that way. But I'm going to tell you right now that having a relationship with God is the end goal. Yep. That's the prize. Not getting your marriage back. Not getting your kids back. But knowing Him. Yeah. And once you know Him, the life flows out of that. And then it starts sustaining everything around you. It starts, everything's blessed. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, many of us uh, have looked at God as a, um, maybe a lottery thing, you know, kind of to get what we want. You know, I'm going to come and I'm going to, and that's in the American church more than other places. And God, as a loving father, wants to bless you as kids. And, and the Bible does say, you know, uh, give us this day our daily bread. There's needs that, that are being met. But hopefully on your journey into looking for what you're looking for, you get changed. I remember when Lonnie came into the men's home, he cared nothing about God. He just wanted to get his a wife back. But in that time, you know what? He realized that there's some major ways that he thought in his life that were wrong. And as he started praying to the Spirit, you know, it changed to where he wanted God. Yeah, you know, he, he got kicked out more than anybody ever. And he's got one of the strongest personalities ever. But that all doesn't matter. Because he never quit. <laughs> and... <clears throat> and there was a hunger that came on the inside of him that couldn't be shaken with the um, the things that weren't real or genuine. And uh, you know, it's it's. Let's read in Peter here. He says, "Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, First. yeah, First Peter, Bethania, elect according to." The foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It was so important that Jesus raised from the dead. Because he raised from the dead, now you and I can be raised from the dead. We're not going to be stuck in Hades and Shoal. That's beautiful. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. Well, you guys, we have an inheritance that's incorruptible and undefiled. Mm -hmm. This earth and the things in this earth are deteriorating. You got the four laws of thermodynamics. Everything's breaking down. Even your physical body is getting older and it's going to perish. You know, it's going to go back to the dirt. And But the things in, in Christ, I love it where Daniel says, you know, I'm a part of the kingdom that shall see no end. You want to build something that does, is not stolen. Build your relationship with Christ and, and work in the kingdom of heaven. And he says it's an inheritance corruptible, undefiled, and it does not fade away. I've had a lot of things rust out, tools and stuff. I've had a lot of things misplaced and stolen. But it says that this is incorruptible, it's undefiled. It does not fade away. It's reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through, through faith for salvation, ready to be real, revealed in the last time. You're kept in faith. Well, without faith, it's impossible to please God. He who comes to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who don't only seek him. You can say, well, I've had a spotless church attendance record. That's not going to please God. Come on. What's going to please God is faith. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus, the two times Jesus marveled in the New Testament was with the centurion soldier. And when he told the woman, I'm not going to pray uh, for your child. I, I, I may be misquoting that, but he said, um, I, I didn't come for the dogs, you know, pretty much. And then she comes back at him and says, well, even the crumbs that fall from the table, the dogs get. Yeah. He goes, I'm amazed by your faith. Mm -hmm. You know, he was based, he said, you know, he was coming to Jerusalem for Israel first. Of course, we know that we're welcomed in as a Gentile. But he was amazed at her faith and he healed her child. <coughs> Blessed be the God. And those are two people in the, in, the New, in the New Testament there. They were not people that were in the church. <laughs> They were not in the church. Yep. They were outside the church. How do you get faith? You get faith by seeing God and, and getting to know Him. The more you know Him, the more you trust. Amen. The more you see Him working, the more relationship you with you have and the more confidence that you, you, you can get. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, but He says, God says, I am the Word made flesh. Yep. So you you get the confidence of getting in the Word of God, and that builds your faith. Amen. Well, these people saw, that centurion saw the Word, and he believed in them. That, that woman who, her child was ill, and she wasn't even probably a church attender, she saw the Word, she saw Him, she knew Him, and she <laughs> trusted in Him. It's trust. Faith is trust. Uh that's good. Kept. The word kept. It's the strong word 5432. It's a military term picturing a century standing guard as protecting against the enemy. We have a spiritual combat, but God's power and peace are the sentinels and protectors. So he's keeping your inheritance. He's protecting it. That's good. It won't be taken. There was a, someone teaching last week I was hearing, when Adam and Eve fell, uh, she, she heard the Lord uh, say that when Adam and Eve fell, that Satan was like, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? And he's always been, Satan has always been trying to keep the word of God to not come forth and the will of God. So if you look at your life and the words that you're speaking, are they ones that are inspired by emotion from the flesh, from hell? Because you can put the flesh and the devil together. That's one and the same in many cases. When you're talking about anger, emotionalism, works of the flesh. Not always, but also your flesh can be empowered by the Holy Spirit to do great things. But what I'm talking about is when you just get mad and you run off at the mouth or you're just thinking from a natural perspective. That's not where we're called to live. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen glory, short of the glory of God. What did you look like in the garden before you had clothes and you were naked? Were you really naked? No. You were covered with God's glory. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In the garden, <clears throat> the glory of God was coming through us. God always clothes everything that is created. It'd be like a house with no trim carpentry on it. It'd be a little naked around the windows and doors. And you got clothing of, of, of the, the birds with feathers and the bears with fur. And man was covered in his glory. But then you'd come to me and say, no, no, the scripture says God will not share his glory with another. He wasn't talking about family. He was talking about other gods. Mm-hmm. He will not share his glory with the watchers who came down to look over the earth, but they fell, and they're held in great chains of darkness, and to, waiting the judgment that's to come. But with you and I, with family, the glory of God's there because we're not stealing his glory, we're walking in it with him. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. It's family. It's just like my kids, they don't have to ask me if they can go to the fridge and get something to eat. They can eat something in the fridge. But then if some stranger comes in and busts into my fridge, I'd be like, hey, what are you doing here? Did you even ask to come in? And why are you taking my yogurt? <laughs> yeah. If you would have asked, I might have obliged, you know. 
That's good. So here's, uh, uh, yeah, here's here's a situation. <clears throat> there's a script. There's a, uh, and uh, let's look at at this grieved. Okay, so we were uh, we were right here. In this he greatly rejoiced, though now for a little. Okay, uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, is reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be. So you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes through it is tested by fire may be found to praise honor and glory in the revelation of Jesus Christ whom having not seen you love who having not seen you love though now you do not see him yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible full of glory receiving the end of your faith the salvation of your souls when it talks about rejoice there that's a strong word, uh, a galio. And it's to be extremely joyful or glad. This is the second time in the passage the Apostle Peter speaks of Christians greatly rejoicing. In both cases, it is stated as being because God has provided salvation through the vehicle of the believer's faith in Christ. This faith has been shown to be genuine because it has been refined by these trials as if through fire. It has grown and stood the test of even though Christ has not been seen by physical eyes, only by the eyes of faith. But even greater joy lies ahead for the believer who perseveres through the fiery trials or sufferings here and now. There is blessing now for such faithfulness and glory at Christ's coming again. I want to tell you something that uh, you're going to be, uh, go, you'll, you'll go through trials as, as a Christian, and you'll go through persecution if you want to live righteous. You're going to fight some battles. But, you know, King David said, you know, re re restore unto me the joy of my salvation. There should be joy coming out of you. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Now, some people don't, you know, laugh and all that, but there should be some real joy coming out of your life. If it looks like you've been baptized in lemon juice all the time, then there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it's like um, you're in a situation where all that comes out of your mouth is negativity and all that comes out of your mouth is destruction or gossip or backbiting, that's of the devil. You're, you're living in the devil's kingdom and releasing the devil's stuff. If you're rejoicing in God and thankful for the salvation, well, what, what if, uh, you know, what I'm saying to you today is that none of us have any reason at any time to be in a place of whining. We don't. We shouldn't be in a place of of feeling sorry for ourselves. Yeah. Maybe for a second. And I mean, I, I've I've been in in ministry a long time, and I've seen some things, man, that were so heinous, so bad, <coughs> that were done done to men when they were little kids or seen some stories that I'll just, you know, I'll take them to my grave, but I just, they're not worth repeating. And the thing is, is I see the love of God restore people through the most heinous situations. Yeah. But even these people that went through severe abuse or, or injustice, God sees it all. Yeah. Whatever man sows, you know, he's going to reap that. And I'll only stay with a person in their sorrow for a short time. Maybe 10 seconds. And then I'll say, but let me tell you about the resurrection. Let me tell you about a hope that shall not perish and not fade away. That's eternal. That's it. Let me tell you about a place where you need to live. Because in the body of Christ, there's no victims. There's no feeling sorry for yourself. There's none of this. And man... I'm telling you that there is some dirty stuff that happens on earth to people through growing up, through the devil's works through people, through the court system at times, through things that go down. But I'm telling you, my friends, that we are to live in a place so far above that. 
You never see Jesus sitting down on the side of the road and saying, you know what? I left heaven and all the glories of creating the whole earth and everything, come down in human form, and these people want to throw me off a cliff on my first message. Father, forget it. I don't deserve this. I'm out of here. You never see him doing that kind of stuff. Nope. You see him saying, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He says, you didn't take my life. I laid it down. Come on. I could have killed angels and angels. He always comes from a place of such strength. Yeah. Yeah. Never whining, never negative. But let me tell you some of the keys that Jesus showed us. He got alone with the Father early. Yeah. Yes. Or for some of you, if you work grave, get graveyard, that could be late. The point is, is, he got alone with the Father. Made it a priority to get heaven's perspective. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. Because this earth that we're living in, it has a lot of bad things going on. And we have got to get into God's presence to see as yes. God sees. Yes. So that way we can be not a thermometer, but a thermostat. We change the temperature, we don't just read it. Come on. Anybody can walk into a prison yard and hear all these kind of things that people say about people. Oh, that guy's stinky. Why? Oh, because he steals and, you know, someone's going to stab him pretty soon. He's not going to make it around long. Well, that guy's this. That. All these jackets people put on people. Mm -hmm. But if you start bringing heaven's perspective, you start speaking prophetically into their life of what God has basically put in them, even if they haven't displayed it yet. Yep. Because you see it in the Spirit. Exactly. Oh, that, that guy there, he's got a gift of faith. Well, I've never seen it. That's because you never stirred it. You never spoke it. Something happens on earth when you speak something out of heaven, of truth, of God. There's something that happens and there's something that's released. And, and you'll see throughout history when God is moving, things are being spoken out over people on earth and then it happens. That's it. God has wanted you to see things in heaven and speak them forth on earth. Not be a stupid parrot that just repeats what all the other slime balls are saying. Come on. He wants you to be a heavenly man. Mm -hmm. And when I say slime balls, I'm not disregarding or saying that humans are worthless. They're very valuable to every soul God bled for and died for. What I'm talking about is a slime ball dirtbag mentality where all you are is to the level of the dirty, devilish, moving, fleshly beings mm -hmm. that are bound by the devil. You've got to be above that, and you've got to see the Spirit, hear the Spirit, and declare things over the city and break it. Because we're wanting to pull these people out of the slime ballness, out of the captivity of the devil, into the heavenly light and awakening. Yep. But they're not going to awaken if you're saying and seeing the exact same things that they're doing. If you walk around and you get a revelation of the joy of heaven and the joy of Christ, and just that alone bubbles out of you, people say there's something different about you. Yep. My one daughter, Whitney's always laughing. And sometimes her laughing is so uh, uh, continuous, I get a little annoyed. <laughs> you know? But then I'm thinking, Lord, I should be more joyous like that. I am on the inside many times. I don't laugh and express it. Maybe I should. But um, it's a joy that comes. There's a joy that comes when you know Christ. You know, um, my son had been struggling with these different spirits that come to him at night and, and put anxiety and fear on him. So I was telling him, I was like, hey, listen, you got you to gotta understand spiritual warfare. You got to do spiritual warfare. And that's where you, you rebuke the devil. You rebuke the devil. But my son's like an introvert. So he always keeps his mouth shut and he thinks. That's all he does is he runs problems in his head. He laughs, and I'm like, what are you laughing about? Oh, I, I just was thinking about something. I'm like, well, share your joke with others. Don't no, just keep it to yourself. <laughs> you know, this is the way he does it. He's just internal. And I'm like, no, you got to be a little bit external. But then the other night, he was in a room, and it was late. And then I said, hey, go get to bed. And he leaves, and I'm sitting there, and the same spirit that's been tormenting him, I felt it. And it was a destroyer of reasonings. Because I asked him, I said, why are you so fearful? What's vexing you? And he said, well, I was like, well, give me an example. Like, just give me an example of like, what kind of fears come on to you? Know? And uh, he's like, well, like one instance is um, I, uh, if I wake up that um, I'm, in a, I'm another person. And I don't know how to get back to my, my same uh, 
my my same person or that you know mm. and I was like okay wow. I'm like that's kind of weird but then um, I, but then he was giving me different you know situations like that I'm like but you know that's just that's just lies you know what I mean that's so absurd mm. but but then I was sitting there and I felt this entity and, and it was this this entity this spirit and so I was like hey I was like kick rocks get out of here and so it left um, and then uh, the, the next day I was like, hey, Ruben, you know that spirit that sometimes come on you? When you left the room, I, I felt it. And I, and I talked to it and I told it to go and it did. He goes, well, that's, he goes, I hadn't felt um, these fears. Um, so that's good. That makes sense. And I'm like, but you don't, you don't have to uh, live up underneath that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And sometimes the fears could even be something that actually does make sense. That's not so wild. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but fear is not any place that we need to live. Yeah. And so I told, I told them, <laughs> I, I, I told them, you know, I said, like, with a bully, you kind of, like, go to the worst case scenario. You know, like, what if this happens? Well, then I'll die. Well, then what's, what's so wrong with that? You'd be in heaven. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll just follow the fear through and just say, kill me. I'm not scared to die. I've already died. I've denied myself, picked up my cross, and fought following Jesus. Mm -hmm. My life that I live, you're doing me a benefit if you kill me. Well, what can the devil do to somebody that's not really scared to die? Not a whole lot. Come on. <laughs> yep. You don't care. Mm -hmm. You know God's got it. Mm -hmm. I should tell my son, if you wake up as a different person, that person just give their life to the Lord too and be saved and walk with Christ. That'd be another person that's born again. <laughs> no, it, it's. I know that sounds kind of funny, but there there is a real spirit that comes. It does. Yeah, I was speaking to. Um, Though it be tested by fire. Now listen, this faith be tested by fire, may be found in the praise, honor, and glory of the revelation. He says here that. Um, it says here that in this you greatly rejoice. So now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. That the genuineness of your faith, much more precious than gold that perishes, through it be tested by fire, may be found. It says that 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 your faith being tested is more precious to God than silver and gold. Mm -hmm. You're, you're testing and you're vict victory. Yeah. One time I was out on the streets with this young man years ago, and we were, we were ministering and stuff, and sometimes this guy was a little rude. <laughs> and so this one lady spit on him one time, you know. And um, he's like, well, I'm going to get some uh, wards in heaven because, you know, I was persecuted for the gospel. I was like, no, that doesn't count. I was like, you were just rude. You need to learn how to be more kind. Mm -hmm. You know, but he was hoping he could chalk up some treasures in heaven, you know, for persecution. Now, a lot of people think that these trials they're going through are because of their faith being tried by fire. But sometimes it's just because they're an ass. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not your faith being tried by fire. You were in the flesh. <clears throat> you didn't cherish your wife. You didn't, you know, do this or that. It's just the consequence of the flesh. It's the work of the flesh. So don't pat yourself on the back like you're being tried, and really you're just a jerk. <clears throat> but sometimes, especially when you are were a soldier for the devil, and you make that turn for God, you do go through persecutions. Okay. When you were a soldier for the devil, and you were doing dope, and you were running and gunning, you were doing all kinds of stupid things, and then you turn for God, you think the devil's going to send you a dozen roses and a thank you card? You might not be doing the ton in the kingdom of God. You might just be kind of sitting there and once in a while, some of us uh, guys that have been in the body of Christ for a while, we're wiping your dirty diaper, cleaning the poop off your leg. When you're 40 years old and you're wearing a diaper, it's one thing, you know, if you're new in God, we'll, we'll clean you up a little bit. But some of us got to mature a little bit. Yeah. You're 40 years old in spirit, we're still dealing with your offenses and this and that and the other. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Like, let's, let's get a little more mature. I'll clean your diaper if you're a kid in the body of Christ, if you're a newborn. But if you're a little older, I'm going to say, now, come on now. It's time to potty train you. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be cleaning up so much messes in the church, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but here he says that you're going to be tried by fire. 
And I know many of us in here have been tried by fire. Maybe some of you guys, you know, there was things that happened to you that, you know, you, it wasn't fair. You didn't deserve it. Even if you were a bit of a jerk and you weren't walking for God, you went through some things. But the thing is, is that don't ever let anything shake you. Build a foundation in Christ. Get a hold of his word. What are you looking at, man? What are you, what are you taking in? Come on. Exactly. Take in the word. It's spirit and it's truth and it's life. And say, God, lead me, teach me. And do this with your pride and your ego. I was telling Boone, he, he takes jiu-jitsu. And I'm like, yeah. I was like, I was undefeated this year, such and such year wrestling. I said, I was just kind of joking. I'm, I'm going to go into your gym and I'm going to tap out your coach. And he goes, no, he'll kill you, dad. I was like, listen, I'm like, don't be saying that. He goes, you know, at my, my gym, at the jiu-jitsu gym, it says, put your ego here. And then it's got an arrow and there's a garbage can underneath it. He goes, the first thing you got to do is you got to get rid of your ego. Yeah. I'm like, that's all I got. Yeah. That's, that's what keeps me going. It makes me train so hard. And he goes, no. Oh, gosh. It's, anyways, um, but I was, I was, you know, the thing is, is that when, when you're looking at, at uh, these things that you're going to fight and these things that you're, you're dealing with, you know, we need to be in a joy, in an inexpressible joy, full of glory. And having faith and staying in faith, the salvation of our souls, we need to be in the Word of God. We're living in a, in a, in a timeline that we've got to bring the presence of God and the change into every facet of the world. Because the whole church is the whole answer for the whole world. Yep. But a lot of us, we're, we're still in a place where we need that closeness with Christ and that Christ connection to where some of the insecurities and stuff start melting away. Yeah. And we can have somebody like talk crap about us and we don't go off and get offended or want to go smash them. We need the fruits of the Spirit. Did you know that, you know, it talks about a vessel of honor and a vessel for dishonor in, 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 the, in, the, in the body of Christ and all that? Did you know that lampstand that they have in the, um, this, the, the holy temple that holds the candles? They take a solid piece of gold and they beat on it and beat it. And shape it, form it. And a good friend of mine, a prophet came in and he almost started crying and he was prophesying over him. He goes, I see God hammering you and hammering you and hammering you and and uh, and, and chiseling you and, and, and chasing you. Not God hammering him, like hurting him, but just things of life. But he was talking about, the prophet was almost crying, talking about how this process was going to be that he was going to go through. To, to build him into a beautiful vessel of honor. Mm -hmm. And this brother that I know, in his life, I've gotten m more upset with the things that people have put him through, things that have gone on, than he has. He has more of a godly response. I'm wanting to go li light up an AR-15 on some of these cats that have just done heinous things, like crazy things. And of course, I'm exaggerating. If somebody's watching on TV, you don't need to send the feds. I'm not going to go kill anybody. But I did want to go physically tune them up. I can tell you that. And these are people in church that are doing crazy stuff. Just because I've seen that work sometime, but my, my heart was wrong. One time there was a guy at the men's home who was just so annoying. He annoyed everybody. And then there was a guy with a bad temper, very bad temper. And one day the guy with the bad temper broke the rib of the guy that was annoying and like popped him in the nose. And they both learned. The guy that was annoying was less annoying because he realized that there might be fruits of, of his annoyingness. And the guy that had temper, he realized that, oh man, if I get on the streets, if I break my parole, I'm going back down for a while. I gave them both a break and it worked out. And so I was thinking, well, maybe that would help with some of these Christians that tormented my friend, you know. Kind of. <laughs> but um, the thing is, is that is that he went through so much, but now years later, um, man, he's a beautiful saint. Come on. So, so much has gone down, and, and he has not uh, become bitter. He's become better in his walk with Christ and the fruits of the Spirit and and. You know, the humility and the, and, the, and the walk that he walks in. Um, the trials. 
man, let's let's go to prison because we preach the gospel, not because we're doing crimes. Amen. Let's be persecuted, man, because we're walking in righteousness. You know, not because you're doing something that's sideways. Mm-hmm. And he says the testing of your faith, when it is tried and is victorious, <laughs> it's more precious to God than silver and gold. Do, do we have an attitude of joy? Do we see the blood of Christ and what difference that made all the difference for you and I? Are you are you somebody, man, that's that's out there awakening other believers to the gospel? Well, I don't do much evangelism. Learn that script that Wayne has. So easy. It's the Rodney Howard Brown script. Rodney Howard Brown had such a ministry of soul in him. He, if you listen to the guy, you go down to his church, he's got such the heart of God. You don't have to do it like everybody else. Just do it. But if you don't know how to do it, learn the script. And then just make it easy. And then you can kind of deviate off of that on your what the Lord leads you. Yeah. What mm-hmm. words that you have for people. Yeah. But be a soul winner, man. Come on. Be a soul winner. Yeah. But, but let's, let's get into this thing again where we're not... I mean, we can cry out to God in our private time and say, God, why is this going on? I'm not talking about you guys like being fake. Be honest with God. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Say, God, why is this going on? I don't understand this. This or that or this. Cry out to God. But at the same time, don't waver. Yes. Yeah. Don't, don't blame God. Don't be sideways. Because he's going to get you through the injustices. And let me say this. Your goal on earth is not to make your life more easy. Your goal on earth as a believer is to become more Christ-like and carry out God's will. Amen. That's what I'm trying to hit on. That's it. Your goal on earth is not to try to get your wife to, to treat you better again. Your goal is to change in such a way... Where you truly love her as Christ loved the church. Yeah, and whether she ever comes back to you or not, come on. you've changed. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. And what's coming from you is heaven, Amen. not hell. Because you can't determine what other people are going to do. But you can't be a heavenly man. And we can live from there. Yeah. This year is going to be a year of living from a different place in the spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on now. Being led by the Spirit, walking after the Spirit, through the Spirit, you're going to break. You're going to break chronic addictions. Oh Lord, I just thank you, Father God, this morning that we make a dedication and a choice to serve you and to follow you. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we're going to we're going to we're going to go hard after you this year, God. Yes, Lord Jesus. We're going to continue. Lord, there's more glory that's going to come through us, Father God, as we walk after you. There's more fire that's going to come through us as we walk after you. Lord, we're going to be that soldier, that end time soldier that you talked about in Joel and the Spirit of the Lord is poured out in all flesh. God, we say yes to you. We yes. say yes to you, yes. Holy Spirit. <clears throat> we say yes to you, Father. Holy. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in these hearts. Yes. And Lord... God change us at the core of what we're doing and our motives. Yes. Yes. Why we do things. Yes. What we're all about. Expose God deception. Show us our hearts, oh God. Yes. yes. Lord, show us our hearts, Lord, and purify our hearts, God. Yes. And cause us, Father God, to be soldiers that would believe please in you. Cause us to be family members that are mature and need help. It can help shore up the body of Christ and the nation and cause reformation and education in Hollywood. Lord, in the news media, in every aspect, God, use us, Father God, yes, Lord. to change this world. Yes, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, this is what the Lord was saying to me, is that some of you have come to maybe get um, free of addiction or just certain things, you know, whatever reason you're here in his care. You might come here for a specific purpose, to get uh, to get some uh, freedom or whatever, but God is going to make you a world changer. And the Bible says that I use those. He says not many strong, not many wise, not many smart, 
didn't say all, not many rich. He says mostly he uses people that people wouldn't expect yeah. to change the yeah. world. Come on. Because then, then they can see that it's God that's doing it. Yeah. Amen. They say, what? That person did that? He did not have any kind of understanding of that. That must have been God. Mm -hmm. That's it. Come on. They said that they could they could see that they were Jesus with Jesus because of their boldness. But when you spend time with Jesus, not only are you going to get free, but God is going to turn it around and make you change the world, even though you might have come for change yourself. Mm -hmm. Can I share something with the guys? Yeah. So we were talking about the script. So this is how powerful the script is. That I would encourage you guys to learn it. Ask Pastor Wayne for it. Last yesterday, I went with uh, Wayne. And Sharon to the mall, 51 souls got saved. 51. I think we're only there for maybe two and a half hours, three hours. Oh. 51. We had uh, groups of kids uh, that were teenagers, eight boys, uh, teenage boys, all at once got saved. Wow. Yeah, it was just yeah. bunches. It's people just were standing at the door and we were like trying to avoid security so they don't get kicked out. Yeah. So we're, like, we're, sometimes we get caught up yeah. in uh, ministry and then we have to warn each other of security. Yeah. We're kind of joking around. Pressure you some code words or something like yeah, that, so, yeah, yeah. Or like donuts or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it, was like, it was a box. We had 51 souls get saved. That's right. awesome. Yeah, come on. Yeah, that's, totally. a, that's a testimony. Yeah, it's powerful. I, it's, I had a group, uh, I just was mentioned to this one lady with her family, and all five of them just you know, got saved. And it was like, it was really cool. I had one I was mentioned to this one kid, and another kid did the, he was listening. He, the kid I was ministering to, that was trying to like, give the gospel, he didn't want it. He didn't want to do the prayer, but the other kid was like, I'll do it. And it was like, it was, it was amazing. 